Hi everyone, my name is Marcus and you're watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. So a little while ago, I sent off an ICP test with Triton Labs, and now fast forward about three weeks and bam, the results are in. Let's take a look and more importantly, figure out what it means and what I should be doing next. Before I get into the results, let me talk quickly about what an ICP test is. An ICP OES test specifically in this case, is an inductively coupled plasma optical emission spectroscopy test. That's a bit of a mouthful, but to put it simply, it's a very accurate way of measuring in one go a large array of elements down to very minute levels. It allows us to get a reading on the elements that can't be tested with our hobby grade test kits and also lets us compare our results with the ones we can test for. It's a great tool in the hobby and there are a few providers out there now I went with Triton because they've been doing this for a really long time and are really well trusted around the world for this type of testing. The other reason I went with Triton is that it's the test that's stocked in my local fish store. I'm not interested in comparing different testing providers. I know that's been done before and generated a little bit of controversy. Let's not go there. Okay, now let's check out my results. First, we log onto the Triton Lab site and go into our test. The first category here is unwanted heavy metals. And check this out, zero on all accounts, except a very small amount of aluminium, but nothing to worry about, nothing too crazy here. And everything is still in the green range. Next up, we have macro elements. At a glance, everything is in the green, but slightly depleted. Magnesium being the exception here, it's slightly elevated. But then again, it's still in the green. Potassium, bromine, boron are all good. Strontium is a bit depleted and sulfur is fine, so moving on. The lithium group. Lithium is slightly depleted, as is nickel and molybdenum, but like the other groups, they're still pretty much in the green. The iodine group includes vanadium, zinc, manganese, and they're all depleted a bit, but still in the green. Starting to notice a trend here. Iodine is our first element into the yellow and telling the same story, depleted. The iron group, and hey yo, chromium is elevated and into the orange. Hmm, we'll need to figure that one out. But copper and iron both reading zero where they should be. Barium group, and whoa, barium is in the red and very elevated, reading over 10 times where the recommended level is according to Triton. Definitely going to have a look into that one. Silicon is fine and in the green. And finally, Phosphorus and phosphate are good, both right near the set points, just slightly below. So Triton gives us some help and tips. Of course there is the recommendation for my various slightly depleted trace elements. I'm not too surprised by this as I've not been dosing trace elements for very long. I recently started the Reef Anabolics range mixed in with my two part. However, I'm basically only dosing it at 50% because Calcloser still makes up roughly half of my dosing needs and there's no trace in that. It's an easy fix to increase my trace elements. I'm simply going to gradually lower my Calcloser usage and gradually increase my two-part usage and that will help balance out and gradually raise up my trace elements over time, particularly in conjunction with my auto water change strategy. Now let's see what they say for my elevated chromium. Check for contamination sources such as trace element overdose, rusting metals, and contaminated salt. For barium, it's the same, but also adds dried fish food as a potential contamination source. Downloading the PDF version and viewing it gives us a simplified view of the results. At a glance, you can see that everything is being rated here as green or yellow, except for chromium and barium. Okay, so what do we do now? Well, there's a few things we can do. First up, I can drastically change my dosing, then I can tear my tank and sump apart looking for a hunk of rusting chromium and barium. Then I can do a 100% water change and after that, I can change my brand of salt. No, relax, don't overreact. Take a deep breath and let's think about this. Let's look at the tank first. Everything looks great. I don't have dying coral. Polyp extension is great. Color is good. We don't need to do anything quickly, nor do we need to do anything drastic or dramatic. Let's do a bit of Google and see what we can find. Elevated barium reef tank into Google should do it. Clicking the first link, it's Reef to Reef, the biggest reefing community on the internet. 
Okay, this guy has elevated barrier. Double mine. His is over 300. Mine was at 142. Let's see what people say. All right, it's Randy Holmes Farley. Score. This guy is legit. He's a reef chemist and has written hundreds of scientific journals and articles. Ever heard of two-part dosing described as Randy's recipe? Yeah, this is that Randy. So his advice is definitely something we should trust and listen to. What's he say? Reduce with water changes. I don't consider your level to be any concern. Don't worry about it. Smiley face emoji. Scrolling down, yada yada yada. Oh, here we go. Randy has further flexed some scientific might. He's posted a scientific article to support barium not being particularly toxic. Awesome. Boom, my levels are half this guy's. Randy Holmes Farley himself has told this guy not to worry too much about it and just said water changes can reduce it. Good thing we didn't panic or do a massive knee-jerk reaction to our tank. Now, I did the same thing with chromium and found similar results. At the level shown in my test result, the toxicity does not seem to be apparent in reef tanks. So with that knowledge, what am I going to do? Well, I think my best bet here is to do the following. I'm going to monitor those levels with another ICP test in a few months' time. I'm going to increase my current water changes from 1.5% to 3% a day temporarily, say for just two months. And I'm going to look for obvious sources of contamination, but without disrupting my tank or tearing it apart. So I've already enacted the first two parts of my plan. That leaves us with looking for an obvious source of contamination. Well, my cabinet door hinges are a bit rusty. Now I've received advice from a well-trusted source that these are unlikely to be the cause because if they were, they would be usually coupled with elevated iron and nickel. It's unlikely that a rusting, corroding stainless steel component is the cause because the only contamination is chromium. I'm going to replace them all the same as I don't like that they're rusting, but what else could be the source? Well, Triton said that barium can be contained in dry fish foods. Well, I feed quite a few, and quite a bit, but there's something that I do feed that is expired and is a very cheap flake. For what it's worth, I'm gonna chuck it out. It's expired and I've been meaning to switch to higher quality products for my flake food anyway. So there you have it, my ICP test results. I'll stick to the plan, give it a couple of months of higher percentage water changes, swap out some suspect fish food, swap out my rusty cabinet hinges, and send off another test in a couple of months. I'm gonna make another video at that time to let you follow along this ICP testing journey, but that's all for today. So I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching. My name is Marcus and you've been watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. Bye for now.